First cause points to God. There are essentially four options as regards the origin and existence of the universe. 1. The universe is an illusion, it does not exist. 2. It is self-created. 3. It is self-existent and eternal. 4. It was created by something self-existent. R.C. Sproul asks, Are there options I've overlooked? I've puzzled over this for decades and sought the counsel of philosophers, theologians, and scientists, and I have been unable to locate any other theoretical options that cannot be subsumed under these four options. Option 1 is false. If the universe is an illusion, then the illusion must be explained. If it is a false illusion, it is not an illusion. If it is a true illusion, someone or something must exist to experience the illusion, as well as create the illusion. Necessarily, the cause of the illusion must be created by something that is ultimately self-existent. Hence, option one is falsified, because everything cannot be an illusion. Option two is false. It is not possible for something to exist prior to its beginning in order to bring itself into existence. For something to create itself, it must be before it is, which is impossible. Option three is false. The scientific evidence shows that the universe had a beginning. That matter and energy cannot be eternal, and that the universe is finite. If there were ever a time when nothing existed, nothing would exist now. That something exists now is evidence of something else that is self-existent. It cannot be matter, hence option four is all that remains as a reasonable explanation. As Sproul explains, this isn't simply logically possible, but logically necessary. There must be a self-existent being of some sort somewhere, or nothing would or could exist. A self-existent being is both logically and ontologically necessary. We have labored the logical necessity of such being, yet it is also necessary ontologically. An ontologically necessary being is a being who cannot not be. It is proven by the law of the impossibility of the contrary. A self-existent being, by his very nature, must be eternal. It has no antecedent cause, else it would not be self-existent. It would be contingent. My comment. This then points to mind, rather than matter, that is self-existent and the ultimate cause of all reality. We refer to that mind as God. Thanks to Michael Mote for the text and quotes above. Edits, for clarity or brevity, are mine. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And comment below if you agree or would like to add your thoughts.